Video 2, Adding Features to Objects. In the last video, all the units of the dimensions have been displayed as millimeters, but for instructive purposes, I have been asking that you input them as inches by entering the value followed by the letters IN. Onshape then calculated what the millimeter equivalent was and displayed it in millimeters. I'll quickly show you how to change the units within our workspace so that in this case, they will always display as inches. And of course, you can work with whatever units you prefer. So come up here to the document menu, which is this button with the three horizontal lines next to the Onshape logo. Click it and select Workspace Units. Here, we'll change a default length unit to inches and click the green check button to accept. This will change the length units displayed for all parts in this document to be in inches. You can always come back here and change it if you prefer to use something else. Okay, let's add some additional features to our part. A rectangular slot running across the top, a dovetail slot running across the top, and a protruding pin-like feature on the side of the part. Blind slot one. So for our blind slot, we want it to run across this face back and forth like this. Click on sketch. Now this is familiar. It's telling us to select a sketch plane. I'm going to select this top face of the part because that's where I want to put my profile sketch. I also want a better view of what I'm doing. So right click on this face that I just chose for our sketch and select view normal two. Remember, we can also zoom in and out with the mouse wheel to get a better view. Okay, let's make our sketch. We'll use both the rectangle and the line functions to achieve the same thing. First, click on corner rectangle, then hover over this top edge of the part until the edge highlights. Notice the small coincident icon that appears. This means that if we place the starting point of our line here, the starting point will snap to and be coincident with the edge of the face, which is what we want. Now, drag and extend the rectangle to the opposite bottom edge of the part, like this. And again, look for the edge to become highlighted, and then click to finalize the rectangle. Now, you'll notice that some parts of our rectangle are black and some are blue. The top and bottom segments, colored black, mean that those segments are fully constrained, while the blue lines and blue points mean that they are not yet fully constrained and they can be moved. So here, if I deselect the rectangle tool, or pressing the escape button once will also deselect the rectangle tool, I can then grab this segment and move it side to side. I can also do it with this segment, as well as with these points. But if I try to move the black segment, I am unable to because it is constrained. It is good practice to make sure your sketches are fully constrained, but that's a topic for another day. Okay, let's set the width of this slot. Click on dimension, then select both of these segments to set the distance between them. Place the location of the dimension and set the value to 0.25. Notice that since we have set inches as the default length unit, we don't have to add the letters IN after the 0.25 anymore. I still sometimes do it out of habit, but I'm just showing you that it's not necessary. Now, if you deactivate the dimension button when you drag the sides of the rectangle, the whole rectangle will move because the separation between the sides is now constrained. Finally, let's set the distance between the edge of the part and the edge of the slot. Again, click the dimension button, then select the edge of the part and the edge of the slot, place the dimension and set it to 0 0.1 inches. Now notice, all the points and segments of the rectangle turned black, so it is fully constrained and we cannot move it even if we try. Blind Slot 2. We can also use the line function to create the same slot type feature. Let's do that now. Click on the line button and for the starting point, hover over the top edge of the part again and click to place the starting point. As you drag the segment down, you'll notice that it likes to snap into a vertical orientation and this little vertical icon appears. That's good, we want that. Keep dragging it until the bottom edge of the face is highlighted. Good. You'll also notice that two icons have appeared, one for vertical 
meaning the segment is vertical, and one for coincident, meaning it's going to be coincident with the highlighted edge. Click again to finalize this segment. You'll notice that by default, it also starts drawing the next line. Okay, so let's finish placing all the segments and make sure our loop is closed. Now we can set the width. Select Dimension, then select the two sides of the rectangle, place the dimension, and then set the value to 0.4 inches. To make this a bit more interesting, we'll have the slot pass through the center of the part through the central hole. So deactivate the dimension button and drag the rectangle to be roughly at the center of the part. But to get it exactly in the center, there are two things we have to do in the sketch. First, we have to mark the center of the hole, and second, we have to mark the center of the rectangle that we are positioning. So come up here and activate the point sketch button. Now hover over the center of the hole and three things will happen. One, the outline of the circle will highlight. Two, a yellow square will appear indicating that it is the center. And three, a small white icon indicating concentricity will appear. Click to place the point. Good. Next, let's mark the center line of the rectangle. Select the line tool and also activate the construction button. This means that the line we'll be drawing is only for sketch purposes and will not be used for extrusion. Hover the cursor over the top edge of the rectangle. At first, the whole top edge of the part will highlight. Slightly move the cursor so it's roughly over the center of the rectangle segment, and again, three things will happen. One, the segment will highlight yellow. Two, a yellow square will appear. And three, a small white midpoint icon will appear. Just like with the hole previously, we now know that we're at the center of the segment. Click to start the line and drag it to the midpoint of the bottom segment. Click again to finish the segment. Now the segment will want to continue, so press the escape button to cancel out of it. Good. Now we have our center line, and if we try to drag it, the whole rectangle will shift. The last step is to define an overlapping relation between our newly created center point and center line. The proper term used for this is coincident. So with the left mouse button, select both the point and the center line. Make sure the cursor has a small number two next to it, indicating the two items are selected. If you mess up, you can just click on white space to cancel any selections and start over. Then find a coincident button. For higher resolution screens, it will be across the top here. On lower resolutions, like my screen, there will be a drop down menu with all the different relations. So once you find it, click to create the relation. You'll notice that the rectangle now snaps to the center of the hole. Notice also that the rectangle is now fully constrained and the points and the segments are all black. The neat thing here is that should I need to change the width of this slot, it will always stay centered. Here, let's quickly change it. Just double click on the current dimension and change it to 0.5 inches. Extrude blind slots. We're ready to extrude, so let's finish and close out of this sketch. Click the green check button. We'll change our view to isometric and select the extrude button. This again looks familiar. Notice that this feature is labeled extrude 2 because it's the second extrude function that we're doing on this part. For the first set of options, we're still dealing with solids and not surfaces. For the second set of options, we now want to make a slot so we're going to have to remove material, so select that. Next, we need to select faces or sketches for the blue input box. So select the two rectangles we just made. You'll notice that because the circle intersects the second rectangle, we'll have to make multiple selections to get everything. For the end type, leave it at the default blind, and for the depth, set it to something less than 0.5 inches. Alternatively, if you hover the cursor over the depth input field, you can use the mouse wheel to cycle through input values, which can be convenient. I'll set my depth to 0.1 inches. Now we can accept with the green checkbox. Dovetail slot. Next, we're going to create a dovetail slot on the same face. However, because the dovetail slot has a more complex cross section, we're going to have to draw its profile on the front face rather than the top face as we've been doing. 
Let's get started. Create a new sketch by clicking on the sketch button. This time, select the front face as the sketch plane for the blue input box. To get a better view of our sketch plane, right click on the front face and select View Normal 2. Zoom in and out using the mouse wheel to get a good view of the face. Now we can create our dovetail profile. We'll place the dovetail on the right side of the part. Click on the line button. Hover over the top edge of the part until it is highlighted and click to place the starting line segment. Drag the line down and slightly to the left to make an angle, then make a horizontal line, making sure the horizontal line icon appears, and then come to the left again to make another angled line, make it coincident with the top edge, and finally finish at the starting point to make a closed loop. Now click on the line button again to deactivate it or press escape once. Notice again the blue sections of this sketch. Because they are unconstrained, we can drag and adjust their positions. For example, if I grab this point, the angle of this line will change. See? Okay, let's go ahead and constrain the sketch. First, we'll set the angle of the walls. Select Dimension, click on these two lines, and we'll be able to set the angle between them. I'm going to enter 60 degrees. Since this line snapped to horizontal when we created it, its angle will not change now. Okay, now do the other side. Now deactivate the dimension tool. Okay, so now when I drag this point, the angle of this line is not changing anymore since we've defined its angle. Next, let's set the depth of the slot. Select dimension and place a dimension between the top edge and the bottom edge of the slot. Click to place the dimension and enter a value of 0 0.2. Now again, if you deactivate the dimension tool and try to drag and change the depth of the slot, you will not be able to. But we can still change the width of the slot and consequently its horizontal position because they're not yet constrained. To set the width, select the dimension tool again. I'm going to show you something neat here. So far, when we've been setting dimensions, we've always selected two items. So if we do it that way, we'd select these two points like this. However, we can also set the lengths of line segments by just selecting one line segment and nothing else like this. See, the dimension appears and we can set it. Good. Okay, set it to 0 0.5 inches. Now, when I drag the sides of the slot, We've defined its width, so only its position changes. Finally, we'll set the position of the slot. We could use one of these corners to dimension off of, but it's better practice to use the center of the slot to define its position. To do this, we'll use a center line. So select the line button and also activate the construction button. This means the line we'll be drawing won't be used when we extrude the features. It's only helping us to define and constrain the sketch. Now, hover over the cursor over the bottom segment of the slot. The segment will highlight. As you get closer to the center of the segment, a box will appear indicating that it is the center of the segment. A small midpoint icon will also appear. This is exactly what we want, so we'll place the starting point of the segment here. Now, when we drag the center line upward, you might notice that there are two midpoint boxes that appear when you hover over the top segment of the slot. One is the midpoint of the slot, and the other is the midpoint of the edge of this part's top face. The way you can tell which one is which is by looking at which segment gets highlighted when you hover over it. Another trick is to come back down to the starting point of the construction line and slowly drag it straight up. A small perpendicular icon will appear. Continue dragging, making sure the icon remains visible. Then, when you get to the top segment, you'll know the line is perpendicular and thus directly above the center point or midpoint of the bottom segment of the slot. Good. Click to place the center line. Now, as you move your mouse, you'll notice that it wants to keep drawing additional line segments because we didn't close a loop. Simply press the escape button to stop drawing additional segments. Now, if we drag the slot side to side, we'll notice that the center line moves along with it. Good. This is what we want. So finally, we can dimension the location of the slot. Click on the dimension button. For our first selection, we'll select the newly created center line. 
For the second selection, we'll hover over the center of the slot we created previously, and the center of the segment should highlight. Click it, place the dimension, and set its value to 1 inches. OK, you'll notice that all sketch elements are black and fully constrained. Exit out of the sketch by clicking the green check button and change our view to isometric. Now we're ready for the extrusion. Click on Extrude. In the Extrude dialog, leave Solid selected and change the second set of options to Remove, since we want to remove material. For the blue input box, select the region of our newly drawn sketch. By default, Blind is selected for end type and the depth is set to 1. You'll also notice that on the preview of the part, the slot doesn't go all the way through the part. There are a couple of ways to make the slot go all the way through, but for now, just click the drop down menu and select Through All. Notice that this caused the depth input field to disappear. OK, click the green check button to accept. Pin. We have one feature to go. We're going to extrude add a pin like feature on this side face of the part. Create a new sketch. For the blue input box, select this right face of the part. Now, right click the same face and select View Normal 2. Let's place the circle at the center of this face. To do this, we could create two center lines running across the face between the vertical and horizontal edges, but there is a quicker way to center the circle. Select the center point circle. Hover the cursor over the top edge. The segment will highlight. Move the cursor along it until the box appears indicating its midpoint. Now spend a couple of seconds here, but do not select anything. Next, do the same for the left edge. Hover over it to highlight it, then find the box that indicated the midpoint, but do not click anything. Onshape now remembers and makes an internal note that you're interested in these two midpoints. Now. Move the cursor to the center of the face and you'll notice when you cross the imaginary center lines, dashes will appear. Now, carefully position the cursor so the imaginary dash lines from both edges are visible and click to place your circle. Drag it out to size it and click again to set it. Deactivate the circle tool. Now notice that the center point of the circle is black, but the circle itself is blue. This means that the position is fixed but its diameter is not. So if I try to drag the center point of the circle to reposition it, I cannot. Next, select the dimension button and set the circle's diameter to 0.375 inches. Okay, good. Exit out of the sketch with the green check button and change the view to isometric. Let's extrude. Click on the extrude button. For the first set of options, leave solid selected. Under it, Select the Add option, since we'll be adding material to our part. For the blue input box, select the region of our newly sketched circle. You can see a visual preview of the feature. Leave the end type as blind and change the depth, which in this case will be the height, the protruded height, to 0.5 inches. And then click the green check button to finish the extrusion. Just a note here, for the sake of instruction, we walked through this in great detail and so it took several minutes. But once you know what you're doing, you really can do everything we just did here in under a minute or so. 